What is up my fellow Warbirds, aka the War Eagles, back and I have some awesome dev blog news. Today is a great day. Woo! Let's get started. Um, so first off, we got, we've got got our first MiG-21 for Russia, the F-13 model. The MiG-21 is a 1950s supersonic jet fighter and interceptor and arguably one of the most iconic Soviet military aircraft in the second half of the 20th century. Coming as, up, coming as a part of Update 1.91 Night Vision, so they've already given it a name, pilots will now have the chance to take to the skies in War Thunder behind the controls of none other than the legendary MiG-21 F-13. Holy crap, they're adding the MiG-21. Okay, for those that don't know, I do know a little bit about the MiG-21. For example, it is the most produced jet fighter of all time. Like, there will be, by the time humanity dies, there will probably still be MiG-21s that are usable. A 1950s Soviet supersonic jet fighter sporting solid flight performance and limited but deadly, with and a limited but deadly weapon arsenal. It has a high top speed, it has afterburner, it's got air-to-air -air missiles, but some of the cons are low ammunition count for the cannons and high speed loss during maneuvers. So, you know, standard, you know, jets, they don't, they bleed energy pretty easily when you turn. I wonder how it's going to compare to, like, say, the F-100 or T-2 in terms of speed bleeding. In War Thunder, the MiG-21 F-13 will be the new top-tier fighter awaiting seasoned pilots at rank 6 for the Soviet aviation tree. The MiG-21 F-13 is the first standard production version of the MiG-21 to be produced in sufficient numbers and brought with it, among other minor improvements, the ability to mount K-13 air-to-air -air missiles, a familiar weapon system to War Thunder pilots, and is also the first aircraft in-game which will be able to break the Mach 2 speed limit. Wow, okay. The MiG-21 F-13 is powered by a single R-13 F-300 turbojet engine. Thanks to this, the MiG-21 F-13 is able to accelerate up to maximum speed of 1300 kph or Mach 1.06 near ground level, wow, and up to 2200 kph Mach 2.1 at an altitude of 13 kilometers. What is that in feet though, Gaijin? In addition, the MiG-21 F-13 has a good climb rate, 120 meters per second, which is one of the best climb rates in the game. Wow. That's impressive. However, while the MiG-21 F-13 can certainly go very fast in a straight line and also climb to an altitude very quickly, its performance does come with, substantial, with a substantial um, negative. Namely, being the aircraft... Namely, being an aircraft with a delta wing design does give the MiG-21 stability during supersonic flight, but also negatively impacts the aircraft's maneuverability capabilities and is responsible for massive speed loss during sharp turns, high-speed maneuvers. As a result, the MiG-21 is best utilized in boom and zoom attack styles, while any sort of extensive maneuvering engagements are best to be kept well off. Clear off. So yeah, it's basically just going to be a faster F-100. Fun fact, due to the visual appearance, the MiG-21 earned various nicknames depending on where it served. As such, the Soviets referred to it as the... I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that. While, while, at, while the Poles, for example, dubbed it Pencil. Compared to earlier variants, the MiG-21 F-13 weapon loadout has has changed, but not at the cost of le lethality. As such, the MiG-21 F-13 features only a single 30mm cannon with 60 rounds of, of ammo. So yeah, wow, you're going to have to be very accurate with this thing. Additionally, pilots may choose to outfit their MiG-13 with a pair of K-13 air-to-air -air missiles, thus greatly bolstering their effectiveness against aerial targets. Wow, so you, you're going to have to be dead accurate with this thing. Complementing the primary op offensive armament is also a host of secondary options which may be used to engage enemy ground units. To do so, pilots will have access to 57mm rocket pods containing 16 projectiles each, as well as the conventional unguided bombs of 250 and 500 kilograms, or two air-to-ground S-24 rockets. Wow. So yeah, that's that devlog. And now to something I'm completely 
thrown off by. The F4C Phantom 2. I straight up did not expect this to appear. The F4 Phantom 2 is well, is a well-known all American all-weather supersonic jet interceptor and fighter bomber developed by McDon McDonnell Aircraft Company during the 1950s. In the upcoming update 1.91, pilots in War Thunder will, may look forward to having the chance to sit behind the virtual controls of one of the most recognizable and no less powerful jet aircraft in the 20th century. A 1950s American jet interceptor and fighter bomber, capable of carrying an enormous payload while also being able to reach speeds of access to Mach 2. Okay, so one thing I've already noticed. In this picture, it's holding four Sidewinder missiles, as well as one, two, three, four, five, six, six times two, that's 12 bombs. Wow! Okay, this thing is going to have an impressive payload. Oh, and what's this? It looks like a rotary cannon, too. Wow. Top speed of over Mach 2. Perfect climb. Deadliest and heaviest payload in the game for a fighter aircraft. Lack of offensive cannons or MGs. So, ascent, but seeing as how we've already got an MG cannon right there, basically what that means is you're just going to have to to sacrifice a uh, pylon for a machine gun, which I'm okay with. I'm straight up okay with that. In War Thunder, the FC Phantom, the F4C Phantom II aircraft will be the first aircraft coming into the game capable of surpassing t speeds twice the speed of sound. This new American top tier aircraft coming to War Thunder update 1.91 will be among, if not the he most heavily armored machine in its class. Thanks in the game thanks to the sheer number of variety of weapon loadouts. One of the first things that made the F-4 to stand out, F-4 Phantom 2 stand out from contemporary and indeed upcoming aircraft was its outstanding flight performance. Namely, the F-4C could reach a maximum speed of 1,460 1, miles per hour at an altitude of 37,000 feet while still managing to get up to a more respectable speed of 845 miles an hour at sea level. So, first aircraft in the game for America that's going to hit Mach 1 on the deck. Awesome sauce. The Phantom is capable of reaching such mind-boggling speeds, mainly thanks to its two General Electric J79 GE-15 turbojets. So, the way I see it, this is probably going to be one of the first aircraft that may have a thrust uh, correct me if I'm wrong but I think it's going to be the first aircraft that's going to have a thrust to weight ratio of over one of over one as such the Phantom will become one of the first aircraft in War Thunder capable of reaching and surpassing Mach 2 speeds while this certain ability will certainly allow pilots to explore, develop, and take advantage of new tactics, strategies, and aerial combat. It is also worth noting that the F-4C can only reach such high speeds at high altitude, and more importantly, only with little to no ordnance on board. Okay, so yeah, that's where it's going to be balanced at. It's not going to, you know, hit Mach 2 with everything on board at sea level, which, you know, that's understandable. But regardless, this thing is definitely going to pack a punch. Starting with the introduction and throughout its service life, the Phantom F-42 set a number of world speed records, including one for absolute altitude of 30.04 meters. I think that might be a typo. Speaking of onboard ordnance, there is a double dose of news for War, pilot, war Thunder pilots. First, there is no pre-built directional offensive armament at all. No cannons, no machine guns. Secondly, the Phantom carries the greatest payload of different types of armament among all fighter aircraft for the end game. Just listen to this. Up to 228 Mighty Mouse rockets, 40 Zulu, 48 Zulu rockets, or bombs available from 12 750s, 18 500s, 18 250s, more than 1,000 pounders! <laughs> Dude, that's insane! Three gun pods with rapid fire 20 millimeter Vulcan cannons. To quote Squattish Koala, it's a Vulcan cannon. 
uh, okay, where was I? Uh, 20 millimeter cannons, also available for nailing down light targets, helicopters, and of course, missiles. The ATGM 12B bullpup, and the more devastating ATGM 12C bullpup for ground targets and sidewinder missiles for everything that flies. Whew! Tactics are obvious. Use your speed to reach any target. Use your mounted weapons to kill any target. Do not engage a threat that you are not prepared for. And, of course, have fun with this perfect lightning fast fighter. Wow. Okay, so, yeah, still looking at it, it does have a Vulcan cannon on the front. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, it makes me wonder what its starting loadout is going to be, though. Like, is it going to start with at least one Vulcan gun um, and some air-to-air -air missiles, or what? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, but, I mean, just looking at this picture again, yeah, there's a Vulcan cannon. There's Bullpup. There's Bullpup. I mean, let's look at this one, too. Vulcan cannon. Uh, okay, I'm not seeing missiles there. But yeah, just looking at this picture here, it's definitely got the Vulcan cannon. It's got missiles. Um, it makes me wonder exactly how many Sidewinders it's going to be able to carry. I mean, honestly, just knowing me, I will be perfectly fine with one Vulcan cannon and four Sidewinders. I mean, if I could have four Sidewinders, that'd be awesome. But you know, that's a good, that honestly right there, that's a great loadout. Just looking at this picture right now, great loadout. It makes me wonder how they're going to be able to, like, what kind of loadouts and everything you're going to be able to come with. Just because I'm expecting this thing to have Buku's amount of options to be able to carry out with you. I mean, just looking at this picture, you got the Vulcan, you got the um, Sidewinders, and you've got, you know, rockets. So... It just makes me wonder what I'm going to be able to carry on this thing. I am seriously excited for this aircraft. I did not expect it to come. I was expecting uh, the F-7, the F-8 Crusader, or, you know, something else. And quite honestly, I did not expect the, um, the Phantom II to even come before the F-104 Starfighter. I mean, my gosh. I didn't even expect Mach 2 to happen prior to, you know, next year. This is insane. U.S. aircraft are finally going to have um, a place, you know, at, at top tier meta. Granted, you know, as it currently stands, yes, U.S. aircraft does have a place at top tier meta, but we finally stand a chance against the Axis players. I mean, this, honest, I'm going to be straight up honest. I had been saying, we need to have a counter to the G91 um, and the T2. I'm going to be straight up honest. I think this is overkill. We are finally going to, you know, be able to stomp on the Axis players. This is overkill, in my opinion. This is way too much. I mean, do I think it's going to be, you know, perfect? No. But, you know, I think this is at least, you know... Just re honestly, in the right hands, this thing is going to be ridiculous. Especially, you know, ima I mean, just straight up, imagine this thing on Wake Island where we even have to take off from the ground. I mean, it makes me wonder how quickly it can get up to speed. But, holy crap. I mean, just, I know for a fact this thing can and will beat probably the T2. But honestly, like I said, I just think this is this is overkill, in my opinion. I, you know, I would have been happy with the Crusader. I would have been happy with the F-104, maybe. Well, you know, F-104 may have been overkill. But still, holy crap. This is ridiculous. I did not expect this to come into War Thunder this update, let alone this year. Holy crap. Okay. I am, yeah. If you guys like what you saw, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, join Discord, the link to that is in the description below, and as always, have a good one.